Often have we heard of something becoming a cult classic? Initially, a low scoring slash earning piece of work that garners more attention over the years. Just look to 2012's Dread movie as evidence. It's the same in gaming too. Take Shadow of the Colossus critically praised on every level, but didn't set the world alight with sales. Yet it garnered enough continued support to warrant a HD transition and a full remake on current gen consoles. However, sometimes a game comes out that is so universally loved, or at least by those who played it, yet ultimately it's a failure when it comes to warranting a sequel or continuation. That may be a good thing, as it avoids the property being run into the ground or the creatives to run out of ideas. But there are times when a game is so good, we'd just like some more. As it stands, we're currently not holding our collective breaths that any of the following ever come to fruition. So, while we continue to inhale and exhale as normal, let's have a look at some other much-loved games that won't be getting any sequels. I'm Kirsten from What Culture, and these are the 10 video games everyone loved that will never get sequels. Number 10. Spec Ops The Line it's not very often that a game comes out that subverts the standard of the genre it's pigeonholed to, but that's exactly what the line did. When Jaeger released it in 2012, it looked like a run-of-the-mill cover-based war shooter. And yes, while it did have that in its main core gameplay, it was the story that really sold it. Taking the whole my country tis of thee patriotism and turning it on its head in favour of ideologies seen and influenced by Heart of Darkness and Apocalypse Now. It took everyone by surprise. After gaining traction, Spec Ops went on to score highly and reach critical acclaim. But that was it. But realistically, where could you go with a sequel? Captain Walker didn't exactly leave Dubai in the best of states, both physically and mentally. Perhaps we could play as Colonel Conrad as he succumbs to what would inevitably lead to Walker's mission starting. Whatever we may hope for, it seems that the line was a one-hitter quitter that will only be more loved as time goes on. Number 9. Alien Isolation Creative Assembly's faithful take on the Alien universe was always going to have a rocky start, largely in part to the shamble that was Colonial Marines a few years prior. Which is a shame, as it's such a fantastic and unnerving experience from start to finish. Following Amanda Ripley as she seeks closure over her mother's disappearance, whilst being caught up in a new wave of terror aboard the Sevastopol station. Given that the station was destroyed in the end, it'd be unfair to plonk Ripley Jr. into another scenario somewhere else. But where else could you go in the rich alien lore? It's a shame, as Isolation really captured the spirit of the first film. The fear, the looming terror, the unknown depths of what they were capable of, as well as those damn terrifying androids. If you've yet to play this 2015 low-key hit, it's definitely worth a go. Number 8. Alan Wake after the breakout success of the first two Max Payne games, Remedy's deviation to the supernatural in Alan Wake didn't do anywhere near as well. However, what it did do was make a compelling story based on similar tropes often used by Stephen King, who is name-checked so many times it's a surprise he's not the executive producer. Whilst it did have its two story expansions and a neat little arcade spin-off game, the ending to the main game was somewhat ambiguous and could have potential for a sequel just one hopefully with less Barry in it. We could see Alan Wake's return from the madness and gradual fight back to normality, or further transgression into what caught him in the first place. Sadly, his long development time and changes to gameplay saw Alan Wake not reach commercial heights that were thrust upon it, leaving any potential to continue in the realm of Bright Falls to be left by the wayside. Number 7. Okami Clover Studios' Zelda-esque adventure set in beautifully watercolour fictional Japan. Check out any review and they will all tell you how great it is to play, how visually appealing it looks and all the praise in the world about it except how long the intro is. It was showered in accolades and awards, looking to be a real success story for Clover Studio. So why is it on this list then? It sold a decent amount, so it couldn't be because of numbers alone, surely. Unfortunately, it came at a time when several prominent figures left Clover Studios, causing the inevitable closure. With Shinji Mikami and Hideki Kamiya leaving, it took a massive element of the creative team with it. Okami has continued on from its PS2 iteration, receiving not one, but two HD ports onto the last and current generations, as well as Amaterasu appearing in crossover fighting series Marvel vs Capcom. Sadly, it seems like that's all she wrote for the Sun God's adventures. Number 6. Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning 
coming out like the bastardised love child of World of Warcraft and Fable, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning was simultaneously both and neither. It played like an MMO without the online elements, had all the trappings of an RPG with its armour and weapon systems, yet played out in a fast-paced, real-time aesthetic. It was also a massive game in terms of exploration. It had a large, well-written story and was even supported with additional DLC to go alongside the main adventure. It reviewed and seemed to sell well, so logic dictates it would have a continuation, right? Unfortunately, not quite. After a sequel was pitched and potentially started, part developer 38 Studios missed a loan payment and filed for bankruptcy. This left the debt to fall on the taxpayers of Rhode Island, who understandably weren't happy about that. However, there may be a silver lining, but it's not one that fans are holding out for. After the acquisition and formation of the THQ Nordic, the rights have reverted them for KOA. However, no plans to produce a sequel have come forward. Yet. Number 5. Vanquish Vanquish, coming off the back of Bayonetta a year prior, saw Platinum Games taking the fast-paced combat of the latter and ramped it up to 11. Zipping around in the augmented reaction suit, slowing time down to shoot and just overall being a badass, it was a joy to play. Despite being reviewed as a relatively short game, the joy was to be had in subsequent playthroughs on harder difficulties, mopping up achievements and just generally pulling off the sickest moves. The story was left, despite being a bit by the numbers for a sequel. The bad guy gets away and the president takes the easy way out. Think Russian Robotnik, hatching crazier plans with each iteration. It sets the stage for something on a much grander scale, as if Vanquish was a warm-up to something epic. Whilst Platinum Games had a resurgence with Near Automata, a collaboration with Square Enix, it seems that all original IPs have been dropped. What with Scalebound's cancellation in 2017, the continued exploits of Sam Gideon and his super suit are only pipe dreams. Number 4. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance Another Platinum Games edition on this list, this time sharing characters and themes from Konami's Metal Gear Solid universe. Playing more like Bayonetta than Vanquish, Metal Gear Solid Rising Revengeance saw the once panned Raiden taking centre stage in a war against a US senator. As is the usual flair for both Platinum Games and Metal Gear Solid, everything was bat guano mental. The combat was tight and well played out. The story was pure cheese and it left an open air as is typical for Metal Gear. There's sinister forces at play in the shadows, trust no one, etc, etc. Whilst not a massive game, there was tons of fun to be had. Sadly, what with the aforementioned state of Platinum Games and the much publicised rift between Konami and Kojima, it'll be unlikely to see any more entries in the Revengeance universe. Kojima-san has gone on to say that if there were a sequel, he'd entertain the idea of playing as Grey Fox from Metal Gear Solid, given that he's only been playable in a few VR missions previously. It would be amazing to step into the reanimated shoes of Frank Yeager. Ah, well, we can dream. Number 3. Warhammer 40k – Space Marine Warhammer games across the decades have more often leaned towards tactical gaming. The Space Hulk series is focused on squad-slash-turn-based action, whilst the Dawn of War series is reminiscent of Command and & Conquer and its ilk. So imagine how refreshing it was when Space Marine dropped in 2011 across multiple platforms eschewing the tactical RTS gameplay in favour of third-person shooter Slasher Carnage. Space Marine was a surprise hit to some. Shooting was tight, combat was visceral, and being able to switch between the two was fluid and satisfying. The story itself was well written, following Captain Titus and squad in what initially seems like an orc invasion vastly unravel into chaos, evil schemes and plotting. The ending was left open too, with Titus's fate left at the hands of the Inquisition, despite his heroic efforts. That was eight years ago, and we are unlikely to hear any more about the captain. Two sequels were scrapped with THQ filing for bankruptcy not long after. Whilst THQ has been saved and some IPs have been restored, it seems that the Space Marine universe isn't one of them. Number 2. Fez Fez is such a beautifully abstract puzzle-slash-adventure game that it's difficult to categorise half the time. It's not quite 3D, it's just not 2D, nor does it fall into the 2.5D trappings of other arcade games like the Trials Bike series. If you've yet to play Fez, you're missing out. After Little Gomez comes across the titular Fez, he discovers he can rotate the 2D plane he lives on. This perspective change allows access to once thought unreachable areas, allowing Gomez's journey to piece the world back together, one cube at a time. 
Look, just go play it. Taking the platformer world by storm, Fez was both a critical and commercial success. Given the mind-boggling level of development and planning to bring this to fruition, it would have been nice to see more. But alas, despite announcing a sequel in 2013, shortly after creator Phil Fish had what can only be described as a Twitter meltdown and subsequently scrapped Fez 2. Which means that even now, six years on, we'll never see any more of Gomez or his jaunty little headwear. Number 1. Sleeping Dogs It's weird to be mourning a lack of sequel to 2012 Sleeping Dogs when it itself is the result of a failed sequel. Starting off as a continuation to Activision's True Crime series, hopes weren't high after dwindling reception and sales to the Open World Crime series. It's only after Square Enix bought the game, but not the license, that Sleeping Dogs was born, ditching the negativity that surrounded the TC series to become its own game. Calling it a Grand Theft Auto clone would be unfair, as Sleeping Dogs followed an under cover cop in Hong Kong. Channeling martial arts and cop movies from John Woo, Jackie Chan and the Internal Affairs series, it was a surprise hit. So much was the adoration for Wei Shen's adventure that it was subsequently ported to the current generation of consoles. Sadly, it failed to reach predicted sales targets, alongside the dreadful Hitman Absolution, resulting in no sequel announcement to date. Which is a shame, despite how the saying goes, this dog shouldn't be allowed to lie. And that's our list for you. What other games would you love to see a sequel to? Leave us a comment below and let us know. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button and check out our other gaming videos. But for now, I've been Kirsten from What Culture, and I'm going to sit here and try and think of a way that we can get more Ellen Ripley. Please? Someone? Sigourney?